So the next plan is to cut about three quarters to an inch, doesn't matter, off this angle iron. And then I'm gonna put it down here. And this is where my adjustment's gonna be. I'm using a diamond cutoff wheel. You really want to have good eye protection and everything with these because they can fracture. I'm just going to take this over to my grinder, clean it up a little bit, and then I'm going to punch a quarter inch hole through there. Just wanted to clean up the edges a little bit. I'm going to punch a hole through there with my drill press back and add this to the thing. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this carriage bolt to that carriage bolt to make a hinge. I'll cut off the excess here and uh, well you'll see how it goes. I just don't have a long enough bolt to go through the eyelet and then to bend it. Usually I would heat it up and bend it but I don't have a bolt long enough and I don't have any all thread. So let's get started on that. Let's see if I can tweak this a little bit without breaking it. <laughs> Now if you're thinking, oh no, well, I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to cut this off right at the right at the head. So I have adjustment here. And this is just a hinge. This is still pretty hot. That's just a hinge. And this is the adjustment. I added this little block on here. Um, I thought I pushed record, I guess I forgot to, or missed or something. Anyways, I needed height where a adjuster goes through. I needed it at about an inch of height, so I just cut off a piece of square tubing and welded it right to the angle iron to give it a little bit of a lift. So the little toilet looking thing that I just made, square tubing on the angle iron, rounded it off and now it kind of looks like a toilet. It's going to go right here and we'll weld that onto the bottom plate, the long plate. And we want it just this side of center. just inside the edge. Okay, so on this, you want to make sure this piece isn't angled. You want to make sure it is flat through this. It's 
through with that. And this is up here, that's a direct line. It's totally square to it. Okay, so I don't pretend to be the best welder. But I am starting to figure the stick welder out a little bit. Or this wire feed welder out. I'm a stick welder. Okay, so my mission is to weld this that nut into this plate just the nut, not the bar. If I weld anything else on there, this isn't gonna work. And that won't be good. Houston, we have a problem. I welded the toilet on backwards. I can't get the angle. So my plan is, is to take another carriage bolt, cut this one off here, weld that on there to extend this. I won't ever need to come back real far. Uh, just thought I had some more carriage bolts. So I got this extended. So now I can use the inside nut for the adjustment, how far out the angle will be. And then the outside nut, which I'm going to use a wing nut, will lock it down. Then I welded two nuts down here, these 5 16 nuts on the corner. Added these, I'm going to take these out, put another nut here. And I'm gonna use a little bit of fuel line to kind of make these padded. Just slide fuel line on them. I'm gonna have another nut down there so I can lock them in for handles. Now you might be wondering why this is so tall. This will never pass in front of the grinder belt. So I will put the file guard on the knife, however I want the, the angle I want. File guard, the knife will be clamped up here. The file guard will be put in here up against this flat. So I can angle the knife how I want it to go. And when I switch sides, it'll angle on and clamp on same way. Yes. Ugh. <laughs> Anyways, you get the picture. And uh, so this will be a rest flat side of my file guide. It'll be up against this. This will be clamped in. The only part will be in front of the grinder belt. Part forward. I want the height in case the knife has got to have to, it's going to have a heavy angle on it. Shallow angle on that. But if it's 
got a pretty steep angle on it. When it's not me, I mean, I can go a pretty steep angle with that. Which I won't ever do a bevel like that. The bevel will be like so. I'm going to get some uh, cleanup work done on this thing. A coat of paint so it uh, doesn't rust. Get the handle. Like I said, I'm going to use a fuel line or some kind of rubber line. It doesn't matter. You could even wrap it up with duct tape or electrical tape. I wouldn't do that because when it gets warm, the duct tape and glue will get out get y'all sticky, but that's what I'm going to do. The other thing I'm going to do, so it slides easily on my grinder table, or deck, whatever you want to call it, it's kind of rough, I mean my table ain't this rough. So I took a cutting board and added it. This is my old one, this is my magnetic one. And then that just glides nice and smooth. You don't have this uh, 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 thing happening, but you will have the steam. Keep it on a smoother surface. Steel, steel, just never works out real good. bought a cheap cutting board. Use the same glue I use for my knife handles, put a couple screws in it. And it just glides right back and forth. Uh, really makes the bevels come out just nice and sweet. Very sharp, even bevel line. Anyways, uh, I hope you like this project. And uh, if you use it, you know, I know a lot of guys that are out there saying, oh, free hands is one way to go. I don't like getting up on that belt like this. I like keeping my fingers. I uh, don't know about what they're using for belts, but the belts I have, I can cut those bevels in, both sides of this, 3 16 knife, I cut those bevels in, in less than 10 minutes, both sides, it takes them out a lot quick, I can imagine what it is skin. that's why I like having my hands back here, out of the way of the belt, so, uh, I hope you like this project, thanks for watching. God bless.